So what is the best all-terrain tire? If you've asked that question, then this video is for you. Okay, so today I will walk you through three excellent tires that I have logged tens of thousands of miles on that will show you that the race to find the best all-terrain tire involves a bit more mystery than people realize. We've torture tested these tires in some of the most rugged environments from the Idaho mountains to Moab to Baja, driving through mud, clay, rain, snow, ice, even moon dust. By the end of this, you're definitely going to have an answer, but not to what the best AT tire is, but to how to pick the best AT tire for you, which is an answer to a much more important question. The truth is, it's extremely hard to make one tire good in all types of terrain. So look at some of the basic tire design principles. Think of road tires. They have smaller, closer tread, which minimizes noise, increases your miles per gallon, and minimizes wear on the tire. Think of mud tires. They have wide open tread patterns to allow for clean out and grip. That's of course terrible for miles per gallon and also makes a lot of noise. Think of snow tires. Snow tires have lots of siping. That's the little cuts that are on each individual lug. It gives your tire extra edges for extra grip in those really low traction areas. Do you see the problem? Excelling in different types of terrain many times requires a tire designer to choose between two diametrically opposed goals, making it impossible to achieve both well. So what do tire designers do? Essentially, they compromise. Compromise is built into the foundation of every great all-terrain tire. Tire. It has to be. Mapping these compromises is what will lead you to the ideal all-terrain tire for you. Many of the best all-terrain tires still favor a couple functions while neglecting others. So I'm going to walk you through three very different all-terrain tires that we have extensively tested and most definitely can say are excellent tires that each favor a different section of the spectrum. I'll show you the differences, how to spot them, and what to look for so you can pick the right match for your specific use. Okay, let's go ahead and jump into the tires, and we're going to start out with one that is a legend in the business. BF Goodrich has been making tires for 153 years, taking them places nobody thought possible. They outfitted the first car to drive across the United States in 1903. They've sent their tires across the Atlantic on the Spirit of St. Louis in the first transatlantic flight, and they even sent their tires to space on the Space Shuttle Columbia. More appropriate accolades for our topic today is that Benjamin Franklin Goodrich... Yes, that's the guy's actual name, Benjamin Franklin Goodrich. His tires have been on more than half of the Baja 1000 winners and atop the podium on 13 different Paris to Dakar rallies. These tires have been tested. So it's no surprise they revolutionized the tire market with the first radio all-terrain in 1976, followed by the BF Goodrich All-Terrain TA KO2. First of all, the pros. This is an all-terrain tire modeled heavily after BF Goodrich's Baja KR2 racing tire, one of the most dominant tires in all of off-road racing history. It's a pretty quiet all-terrain tire. This is a tire that wears very evenly and carries a 50,000 mile warranty which is a great amount of miles, but it does land squarely in the middle of the tires that we're gonna talk about today. This is an aggressive and great looking tire, so by design standards, it definitely passes the eyeball test. The KO2 is severe snow rated. You can tell this from the three peak mountain snowflake symbol, which will be on the side. This means the performance goes well beyond the industry requirements for a simple mud and snow rating. However, there is also a better snow performer in the three tires that we're gonna to review today. One of the areas where this tire shines is this thing has a super strong sidewall. They have something called core guard technology that's taken directly from those Baja 1000 race tire projects. Baja is a sidewall torture test and these tires are one of the best I've ever tested in this category. One other thing about the KO2 is it's actually a lightweight tire, which is great because rotational weight actually counts against you for about three times as much as the other weight loaded above the frame and suspension. This comes in big for vehicles like Subaru, Cross tracks where they have fairly weak transmissions and when people are lifting these things and trying to stick huge tires on them you're seeing a lot of failed transmissions okay so the cons there's been more issues lately with balancing these tires this would just be a quality control related item that can easily be addressed in the manufacturing process so while this happens for a little while sometimes you can see it get fixed pretty quickly and be back to normal these tires do not do well in mud and clay and when I'm talking mud and 
Clay, you have to understand something here. We are not talking about driving through a riverbed that's a tiny bit muddy. We are talking about that ooey, gooey, deep, deep, super sticky mud. True, true mud bogging mud, okay? Most all-terrains do not do well in this category. This tire is okay at cleaning out mud as long as you keep your tires spinning, but it still holds on a lot more than you want sometimes, and you can find yourself getting stuck in the ooeyest of gooeyest mud. I've also noticed that this tire has a tendency of picking up rocks and gravel. Uh, it does have little ridges in between the tread that is made to eject rocks, but I just really haven't seen that there's enough of them there to actually do it adequately. And I find myself picking rocks out of these tires on a fairly regular basis. If these tires were to get a trophy, they'd get the trophy that they've already earned dozens of times, and I would call them the Baja champion. Some quick specs on these tires. I'm gonna compare 35 inch tires in all these categories just for your reference, but obviously you wanna do your own homework on your size tire. This is a 35 by 12 and a half R17 tire. I compared all 10 ply tires. So the weight of a 10 ply on this one is 66.7 pounds per tire. The actual diameter of this tire is a 34.5, which means it is a half an inch less than a 35 inch. You will find this tire a lot of times in the forums where people are trying to figure out how to fit 35s on their truck without doing lots of modifications. This one's kind of a good winner in that category because it's actually not a true 35 inch tire. It gives you a little bit more room to work with. The actual width of this tire is in fact 12 and a half inches. The tread depth is 15 30 seconds, which there is definitely deeper tread in this category. Uh, but this one does seem to hold up just fine and it does seem to be able to get you the miles. So that comes down to the actual mix that they are using in that rubber and how durable it is. Okay, so the next tire I want to talk about is the Falcon Wild Peak AT3W. Falcon Tire started in 1983 and is owned by a Japanese company called Sumitomo Rubber Industries. Sumitomo, that's fun to say. Uh, and as of late, has been exclusively focused on the UHP or the ultra high performance market. The Falcon Wild Peak AT3W is definitely the wear, wet, and winter champion, and that is reflected in its name, where the three W's actually stand for wear, wet, and winter. Snow testing was done in Michigan and their US factory is in Buffalo, New York. So they may know a little bit about snow. This is pretty much what Buffalo looks like right now. Okay, so let's talk about the pros of the Falcon tire. They do have the deepest tread in their category or at least they're tied for the deepest tread in their category. On um, that tread depth helps them achieve a 55,000 mile warranty, which is the farthest of the tires that we're reviewing today. They are a very aggressive and good looking tire. So they've got the curb appeal. The Wild Peaks, of course, are severe snow rated, just like the KO2s but in my experience, they just simply outperform in the snow category. Now, to clarify in snow category, when you're off-roading out in the snow, you air down generally to single digits and your goal is really to float on the top of that snow. Pack it down and, and float along. All three of these tires do amazing in that category. Uh, they're just great tires uh, for that purpose. In some ways, it's kind of similar to like, are they good in sand? Yeah, they're all good in sand. One of the biggest factors of the sand is, are you air down to single digits. But when I'm talking about snow, I'm more specifically talking about driving in snowy and icy conditions on paved roads. This is like the people that are going up to go snowboarding and skiing in the middle of the blizzard because they want to catch a freshies. So in that case, you can have very thin packed snow and ice on a road and you need those tires that have a lot of siping and a lot of edges to be able to grip that and to do well. These tires are amazing in the snow um, as well as wet roads in the rain. Uh, if you notice, the tread blocks have this step-down tech where it, if you look at the edges of them, you see these little steps built into them. That is really amazing for ejecting rocks. So I also think that this tire specifically has some of the best-in-class engineering for not retaining rocks and potentially having that drilling issue where you can have holes and punctures from rocks stuck in your tires. On the con side of the coin, um, they're not the quietest AT tire, but that's to be expected when you have some of the deeper tread depth. Technically, they are the thinnest sidewall of all the tires that we're talking about today. Their sidewall is only two ply, um, but they did have some pretty innovative engineering on that where they actually take two ply down to the rim and then they double it back up where it's part of your sidewall, the part closest to your rim and about two thirds of the way up is actually four ply. But there is a section uh, right below the ridges on the side of the tire that is only two ply. In ca for cases like in Baja, uh, where you get a lot of side 
sidewall punctures from cactuses, there still is definitely a point of weakness there. Now we do run these tires on our guide trucks down in Baja and we have not had any, well, I wouldn't say we haven't had any issues. You're always going to have tire issues in Baja. It's again, a torture test for tires, but we haven't had any excessive issues. We haven't had torn sidewalls. Okay. So let's talk mud and clay. This tire does not excel in mud and clay. Just like the KO2s, it has a high propensity to fill up that tread with the really sticky, gooey clay and retain it and you lose a lot of traction. If this was going to get a trophy, it's the winner driving champ for sure. This is the tire I want on my vehicle for the winter when I'm doing a lot of snowboarding. Let's run through the specs real quick. Uh, again, I compared like tire. So 35, 12 and a half R17 10 ply tire weighing in at 75.4 pounds. So this is a heavy tire. Actual diameter of these tires is a 34.8 so it's pretty close to a true 35 but not quite there uh, the actual width 12 and a half tread depth 19 30 seconds the Yokohama Geolander XAT. One interesting thing about the Geolander XAT is that it is technically a crossover all-terrain tire. And I think they took an opposite approach of most of the AT tires out there, where instead of starting with a road tire and trying to build in off-road performance, I think in their design, they really started with a mud tire and, and tried to build into a road performer. You can see that by the lug pattern, which is inspired directly from mud terrain tires. There's going to be wider gaps between the lugs. The, the compound that they use in the tire also seems to be softer, and you're, that is reflected in the overall mileage that you get out of the tire at 45,000 miles. Uh, it is the lowest of the three that we're talking about today. Now, the pros of this tire, it's very easy to balance. Tire shops love this tire, so they're doing something right in their manufacturing where they seem to be turning out a very consistent product. It is a very aggressive looking tire. You stick this on your truck, and it's almost as cool looking as a mud terrain tire. The sidewall of this tire are super tough. Whatever Geo Shield Tech is, that's their kind of brand name for the inner core of their tire. It's no joke. It's a tough tire. It can definitely seems to be puncture resistant. Um, I, I would say it's a Baja proven tire. I took this. There's a trail that I guess apparently people are now referring to as the, the Baja Rubicon, but I took this on down there last year in March and did a bunch of miles over a lot of rocks and boulders and this tire performed flawless it was amazing. It's a super grippy tire. Like I said, it's a lot more like a mud tire um, than typical AT tires. Killer traction on the rock, and I think that comes from whatever compound they're using. Like I said, it doesn't get quite as many miles, but if you want a stickier tire uh, with bigger tread, it's going to really excel in the, in the mud and in the rock. This tire is amazing. Now the cons for this tire. This tire is not three peak certified. It is an N plus S certified tire, meaning mud and snow, but it is terrible in the snow. And you can tell you just look at the tire and look at the lugs and look at the design. This tire wasn't inspired to be a snow conquer. It was inspired to be a mud and rock conquer. Um, at 45,000 miles, this is the lowest of the three. This tire is louder due to the wider tread, but it, it's still an amazingly quiet tire. And when you're driving down the highway, unlike normal mud tires that just seem to grab every groove, you really barely feel these tires. They feel like an all-terrain tire driving on the highways. The specs for this tire really quick. Again, we're reviewing the same same size tire, same ply rating, weighing in at 70.3 pounds. This is in the middle of the two, which is surprising with the size of the lugs on this tire. The actual diameter of this tire is a 34.8, so very similar to the Falcon. It's close to a true 35. Um, the actual width is 12.8, so it was the only one that was actually wider than the 12.5. So if you're trying to fit this on a vehicle where fitting a 35 is going to be very, very tight, this is probably not the tire for you. You're probably going to experience some rub if you're putting this into a tight situation. Situation. Tread depth, just like the Falcon, is 19 over 32. Um, and this has a three-ply sidewall with what they call a full nylon cap. Clearly, with this tire, the best strength is that mud and clay. The exact thing that the other two tires can't exactly conquer well, this one excels at. Okay, so what can we learn from these three tires? Well, we covered three amazing AT tires that while they can do a bit of everything, they each had their distinct strength and distinct weaknesses. Ultimately, you need to look at what you plan to do. The best AT tire is the one that matches your adventure. Ultimately, shopping for tires is not about brand preference. It's about what you're going to do with the tire and what it was designed for.